Cat Pretending to Sleep Productions presents a cooking video from the kitchen while I have the house to myself. I've already recorded this video once and had to throw away the footage because I used the cell phone to record it and every single video clip that I recorded had to be thrown away because it screwed it up. I was really disappointed about that because I thought that it turned out very well. So, we're going to do it again. This time I've learned my lesson. I'm going to use a camera. So I'm going to, before I even start anything, I'm going to preheat this oven to 425. Because that is going to take a while. What we're going to be making are these Giuseppe Pizzeria Mini Pizzas by Dr. Oatker. These are the deluxe kind. That's what it's going on it. I love how they show you this package, or this picture of it on the package, as if it's actually going to look like that when it's done. You get eight pizzas in a box. These don't last very long, because everybody just makes all of them at once, pretty much. Product of USA. Keep frozen, so that's why there's none in the box and in the freezer. If you're a label reader, you can go ahead and have a look at that, assuming you can actually read it by the time the video compression gets done with it. Here your baking instructions. Again, you can pause the video if you'd like to read it. Food safety. Bring home the taste and smell of your favorite pizzeria. Yeah, I don't think so. High quality ingredients. Available in thin and rising crust sharing size pizzas. Here's your ingredients list. They really do up this box. I wonder if anybody actually does that. Sends it back if it's crap. I suspect not. There's your different types. I've tried the pepperoni and the pepperoni and bacon. I haven't tried the three cheese, but I think that cheese pizzas are completely disgusting, so I won't be doing that. I don't know. I, I, I think that pizza should have a lot more on it than just cheese. So I'm still waiting for this oven to preheat. Hasn't even really done a whole lot. Figure while I'm at it, get out of the way. While I'm at it, I'm going to get out the pan. I'm going to use, because the pans are all put away, which is like the only time that the pans are ever put away. Nobody ever puts the pans away. I gotta take out all the pans before I can get to the one that I want. Now I know what they say you're supposed to just put them straight in the oven if you wanna crust, I don't do that because I would like to actually not have a dirty oven. So, or at least a less dirty oven than I would if I just put it in there. So I'm going to get parchment paper. I'm going to line this pan with parchment paper. Although, again, it really wouldn't matter. There's so much stuck on junk all over this pan that, well, there you go. So, I've got this Culinary parchment, multi-purpose, non-stick paper. Perfect for baking, cooking, and roasting. Except it's only good to 425, so I hope it doesn't burn. I think I've promised a video about this thing. Um, this little cuisine art. Convection toaster oven broiler. It's a toaster oven. Kind of dirty. Really need to clean that off. Maybe I'll do that here in a second. But, uh... We love this thing. We get so much use out of this. More use than we get out of the regular oven now that we have it. This is easier to just put things in here to reheat it than it is to reheat it in the oven. Nobody reheats anything in the microwave because it tastes like crap and that microwave doesn't work very well anyway. I like how that says Ultimute Filtration because the A has kind of rubbed off. But I always also love how they have to stylize it Purr, but it's actually pronounced pure, and it's a registered trademark. Very hipstery, but it works. You know, you have to be completely fair to it. Works very well. 
gets the chlorine taste out of the water. I hate that taste. It's terrible. Pick up the box that I callously discarded on the floor. I don't even remember what I talked about in the original video while I was waiting for this thing to preheat. There's a light here, but nobody ever uses it because it's completely useless. I mean, I guess if you turn off the room light, it does actually do something, but, like, seriously, that isn't going to do anything. More of a suggestion than anything else. One of these days I'll have to make this stuff. Maybe we'll even do it later on this weekend, but it's Saturday, so who knows. But this, uh, this boost stuff this is actually pretty good. Uh, it's really easy to make, but we never make it. We had a whole bunch of these that expired, and when you consider that we bought these this year, and the expiry date is, like, actually that one is pretty close. But I think this one is like, well, oh, maybe not. But we didn't make any of them. It expired like five or six years ago by the time I actually got back to them. This thing's still working inexplicably. It sounds like crap. And that's what happens to all of these. It actually sounds like it's leaking water in it somewhere, so I suspect that one of these days the electronic controls are going to go bad. And of course, can't really replace it anymore because they're gone, unless you get the Whirlpool OEM replacements. We're almost to 350, which if this was, you know, the usual, the default for this to preheat is 350. So, I guess there's one thing. And you can see all the snow on the ground. A lot of it actually melted today because it got rather hot. Well, hot for this time of year is about three degrees, but... A lot of it melted, and now it's refrozen, so that's probably going to be all crunchy and lovely to walk on later on. But, oh well, at least I don't have to go anywhere today. Okay, that's getting pretty close, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to grab, out of the freezer, the already open set. I'm making myself two of these. No more, because I'm not a pig. So, we'll have those. Keep the freezer closed. This should be just about done. Very close. Just a second now. And there we go. So I'm going to unwrap this. This is what they look like. Really stingy on the pepperoni, if you ask me, but uh, I'll unwrap them and I'll put them on this tray. And we'll put them in the oven, cook them, and see how they taste afterwards. All right, so we'll grab an oven bit because I'm too chicken to put it in the oven with my bare hands. I've burned my hands enough time on this oven. Put it in the middle of a rack. Hope nothing's burning. I noticed some smoke for a second. Yeah, there's some crap on the bottom of the oven that probably should be cleaned up. So I'll put it in. I think the direction said what? 11 minutes. Put it in for 11 minutes. Don't put in 11:00 because you'll put it in for 11 hours, and that's not a good thing to do. Yeah, I made that mistake once. Oops. So. Turn the light on so at least the camera can see it because I'm sure that if I turn on night shot, all that's going to happen is the. No, oh, maybe not. Actually, hold on a second. What happens if I turn that light off? Can you actually. No, not really. So, yeah. Turn the oven light on and keep night shot off. You actually look inside there. Woo! <laughs> I forgot this is the pen that uh, does not like heat. That was kind of scary, but uh, there you go. Normally I'd probably edit something like that out of the video, but I think I'm going to leave it in there because that was kind of funny. Here's the thermostat, what it's set for. It's one of these really old Honeywell thermostats. Works nicely, a lot better than some of those stupid nest things smart th home thermostats that people are buying now and that crap out and you have your system running all the time which is not good for them it's 
so I'm just having a quick look at things while I'm waiting for my pizzas to cook. Basically, I'm just wool gathering about random kitchen appliances at this point, but this is another thing that we get a lot of use of. Well, everybody but me gets a lot of use out of because I absolutely hate coffee and I don't like any of the teas that this thing makes either. At least nobody left a cup in it this time. It's really dirty. Kind of flimsy feeling, but eh, whatever. I wouldn't buy one, but. I know that there are a lot of people that do. They produce a lot of friggin' waste, though. These cups are like... You'd think they'd make these recyclable, but I guess they haven't figured that out yet. Here's another one of those little hipstery devices. With the blue LEDs. Shining pride. As you can see, I actually put water in it, so that way I don't burn it out or something like that. There is a minimum fill line. But, uh... No, it's still holding on. I don't think they've managed to screw up convection heating devices just yet. You know, traditional burners. Even with these granite cooktop things that I'm not the biggest fan of, but again, it does the job, I suppose. You can actually see the burner when I turn night shot on, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, and if you do any serious cooking at all, or interested in getting in any serious cooking at all, you need to buy these. I think they look a little different now, these are older copies, but uh, we get a lot of use out of these two, or at least we used to. We don't really make a whole lot of things anymore, but uh, these are the cookbook to have if you are at all looking into getting into serious home cooking. So, these two volumes, there might be more of them now, I don't know. Like I said, these are older copies, but Anything you would ever want to know about cooking anything is practically guaranteed to be in this book, including making different kinds of bread, as far as I know. Maybe not. I don't know. It says baked goods on it, so I expect that it is. We've never really cooked bread out of this book in that bread maker. We just have a recipe that's in one of these other various books. There's definitely a lot of them up here. Some of them are actually manuals for things, but... Uh, we used to get quite a lot of use, but probably the only people who ever actually got real use out of their bread maker. Um, especially when we considered, or discovered accidentally, that uh, the parts inside are actually dishwasher safe inside of, uh, for this one. So we just put all the parts in the dishwasher and it works nicely. So it takes away a lot of the cleaning work. Let's see how these look right now. Oh, they're heating up. I don't know if it'll actually stay in focus, but uh, probably not. Uh, I have to put it in the manual focus mode. Where's the manual focus switch? There we go. Maybe not. No, it's focused on it. We'll get some focus on it. See there that it is definitely bubbling up now. So, should be done fairly shortly. This clock actually hasn't worked for a while. We recently got it working. It takes a C-cell battery, believe it or not. Keeps good time. I don't know if it's actually correct. I think it's actually off. Yeah, it's about an hour off, but oh well. Nobody thought to change it. Maybe I'll change it now. I can't stand it when clocks are off. Very 1970s draperies. Actually, I don't even know if that's what you'd call this. I don't really know what this is. It's probably like gonna like fling dust all over the place when I touch it. It didn't. There is some dust coming off of it, but uh, one of the very few original things left to this house. There's some more over there. These curtains are new. These are actually really nice curtains. Although, one of the unfortunate things that happened with them is a little tab that was supposed to be right here broke off. It's supposed to have this little tab that you just pull up. Very nice, very handy. 
These windows need to be replaced, though. They're, once again, original to the house and not in very good shape. They let in serious draft. They're the, on they're the only windows left that are original to the house. Down to about a minute of cooking time, and that's smelling really good. I think I'm going to like that. A lot of people don't like onions on their pizza, but I'm really not an onion fan. I just don't like onions on their own. If they're cooked into something, they're actually pretty good. But uh, onions on their own are disgusting. Here's another thing that you should get for your appliance if you don't have one, although I'd prefer a vintage one. Sandwich press, so I think the technically correct term for these is a panini press but you can use it for making pretty much any sandwich um, as long as you clean it, which a lot of people don't do but uh, once you got this thing, I never made another sandwich on the stove again so I'll just use it with that thing things out now. We'll get this plastic out of the way, get the box out of the way, get all this other junk out of the way. It's everywhere. This table is the least clean table in the entire planet. Pull these things out and burn my hand. That would be very nice. We'll have a look at the fruits of our labor. My labor, the labor that you want. Although most of this video is just wool gathering about random kitchen appliances. Make sure to turn the light off. That's what the pizzas look like when they're done. You can compare and contrast that to what it looked like on the box. Let me get these things onto a plate and we'll give them a try. Okay, my verdict is that they're very definitely cheap pizzas. So if you don't like cheap pizza, you probably shouldn't buy these. And another complaint that I have about them is that they're really stingy on the pepperoni. Probably wouldn't have killed them to put a little bit more on. But other than that, they're not too bad. They're not any worse than the regular pepperoni ones or the pepperoni and bacon. If I had to say, if I had to rank them, I would rank the pepperoni ones first. Followed by these ones and the pepperoni and bacon ones, because I'm not a big fan of bacon crumble. Um, so they don't have my pizza anyway. But, uh, yeah, no. If you're just looking for something to make on a Sunday night or something like that, they're not too bad. That's pretty much it for the Giuseppe mini pizzas. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then!